theaters, church services, um, concerts, fairgrounds, you name it. And uh, I've always tried to, to be clear as I can when I, when I say I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today. Um, I wouldn't have the opportunities that I have um, had it not been for, for my mom and dad, had it not been for the relationship that they had with Jesus um, and bringing me up in church, I wouldn't have known um, that there was a God out there that, that loved me so much that he sent his son to die on the cross. I wouldn't have known about this, this Jesus that, that died for my sins and that even though I was running as far and as fast as I could from him for years, he was, he was running faster. He was pursuing me. And um, I like to thank them every night and, and I like to offer just a word of encouragement to, to mom and dads um, who may be here tonight. Maybe, maybe you've got somebody in your life that it's going through something that you prayed they would never have to deal with and hope that they would never have to go through. Just keep trusting and believing. God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for their lives. His plans are perfect. His timing's perfect. And I can look out here and see there's a lot of people in this place tonight too that, that wouldn't be here had it not been for a mom and daddy that prayed or a grandma and grandpa that prayed or an aunt and uncle that prayed for you. And so just keep, keep praying and trusting God for those, for those things that you're, that you're asking and believing for. I thought tonight I would kind of share a little bit about just kind of my mom and dad's side of the story. I, uh, me and my wife wrote a book this past year and um, I didn't realize the therapy session that I was in for when I started writing this book. But um, I've learned that just talking about some of these things and telling some of these stories, there's a healing process that goes along with it. And I shared a story earlier in the spring on tour that I'd never really shared before, but I thought it was maybe time to talk about it some. And, you know, I think as parents, we um, we always try to spare our children from making the same mistakes that we made. Um, kids, if you're out there listening, listen to your mom and dad. They know a little bit about something. Um, but I think as kids growing up, you don't think your mom and dad know anything. And so we go out and we live our own lives and we try to take on the world. And the thing is, is the devil, he knows the things that your family struggle with. He knows the things that your mom and your dad, and your generational things that go through that he knows, you know, he knows all about those things. And, and so, you know, my dad and me worked on a construction company for a number of years and 15 years I worked for my dad um, from the time I was about 18 to 33 and I had a lot of talks on, on job sites. And there was 15 dark years for me because I was running um, after being raised in church. I didn't know anything other than church, but me and my dad, we sat down on the job site one day to take a lunch break. And he told me, he said, I got to tell you a story. You know, he said, uh, when I met your mother, you know, I was living a very similar life that you were living. And at the time I was in my late twenties, I was married. I had a, I had a son, I had a daughter on the way and I was on the verge of losing it all, losing my wife and kids. He said, when I met your mom, you know, I was partying all the time. I didn't want to slow down. I didn't want to settle down. And your mom wanted to start a family. And he said, we ended up separating for about six months. And he said, while we were separated, I found Jesus and he brought us back together. And he said, we made a commitment to raise our children in church. And he said, so we decided the best way to do that would be just to move away from the small town that we grew up in and start a new life, get away from some of the people that we've been hanging out with. My dad had decided he wanted to go to a Bible college. And so they moved to Pensacola, Florida. And then a year later in the summer, 1978, they they had me and I was born and my dad said we had you dedicated as a baby and we raised you in church he said over the years you know we've watched you struggle and he said it's been it's been hard for me to see because he said as a father I wanted to give up so many times he said because I've always worried that you know we did something wrong or we didn't do enough and he said for you watching the lifestyle that you were living if something were to ever happen to you and I, and I didn't believe that you went to heaven or didn't know that you went to heaven he said I don't know that I could could bear that as a father. I would feel like a failure. And I left to go to Europe in the summer of 2012 after him telling me some of these stories. And I was in a dark place. I was going on a tour with a band that I was in. And like I said, I was at the end of my rope and I just remember saying, God, if you're real, prove it. If you can prove it, I'll leave this life behind. And a week into that tour, we were driving across Spain one day a guy scanning radio stations on our bus, I hear a song called Redeemed by Big Daddy Weave come across the radio. And that song stopped me dead in my tracks. And I just remember thinking, man, 
all these years in church, I missed it. You know, I realized God saw me in a way that I couldn't see myself. My family sees me in a way I couldn't see myself. My wife, my children. I came home from that tour. I quit my band. I gave my life to the Lord on June 10th of 2012 in the floor of my closet of my, of my bedroom. And I, uh, I just remember how our lives started to change, you know. I watched relationships, men, that had been broken. The relationship with my family, my, my parents. And all of a sudden, me and my dad and my mom, we had all these new things to talk about. Me and my dad were talking about music all the time. And it wasn't long after that, I got invited to help a church launch a campus, and I started leading worship. And before you know it, I was walking around on the construction site, pulling my phone out, writing lyrics in my phone. I started writing music, and I started playing these songs at my church. And me and my dad sat down on a job again one day, and he said, I got to tell you a story that I've never shared with you. And I said, yeah, okay. He said, you know, I told you when, when you were born that we had you dedicated at this church as a baby. And I said, yeah, I remember you talking about that. He said, well, what happened was is we were walking down to the front of the church that morning. He said, you were screaming. You were hollering, making all this noise. And he said, the preacher, he said, man, he said, this kid's got a strong set of lungs. He'll probably be a singer one day. And everybody had a laugh. And he said, then the pastor looked at my parents and he said, this child will be a voice for his generation. I was 33 years old at the time. I was sitting there crying. My dad was 60. We were sitting on a stack of sheetrock in a garage. It was about 100 degrees outside. We were sharing a can of Viney sausages, drinking a Mountain Dew. And I was like, Dad, why have you never told me this story? And he said, well, I, I didn't want to put any pressure on you. He said, and to be honest, he said, growing up, he said, I thought about what that pastor said. He said, but you never showed any interest in music until you you messed your leg up in college. He said, and you came home your freshman year and took my guitar back to school and said, you were gonna learn how to play guitar. And I thought, well, you don't just pick up a guitar and start playing music. And he said, a year later, you came back and you were pretty good. And you started writing these songs. He said, and then you ended up living in the bar rooms and nightclubs for the next 15 years. And he said, me and, me and your mom would just pray every time we would go to these concerts. And, and they went to a lot of them. They would sit in smoky bars till two in the morning watching me get wrecked on stage every night just to make sure that I could get home okay. He said, we would pray every night that God would take this one day and use it for his glory. He said, I'm telling you this because you have an opportunity to change lives with your music the way that your lives have been changed by music. And I don't say it to you guys to brag. To be honest, it's a hard story to tell. I say it because I don't feel worthy most days. I don't get it right most days. I get it wrong more than I get it right. I'm a work in progress. And I don't want you, I don't want you guys to ever let anybody tell you that you're not good enough, you're not worthy enough, that you don't belong because God has plans for your life. And I've learned over just the last few years, the biggest reason I think that we say no when we start to hear that voice in our head, when God starts prompting us to do stuff, it's because we don't feel qualified to do what he's asking us to do. If you just say yes, just say yes to that voice. Just say yes to God. He will give you the tools. He'll give you everything that you need to go and do his work. My, uh, my favorite Bible verse is Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, for hope in the future. And I believe that with all my heart. I believe everybody here tonight has a special plan. God's going to use you. I wrote this song, this is called Plan For Me.